So, okay, you know that feeling when your favorite framework stops being a rebellious teenager and starts acting like a real adult? That's what Swift UI feels like this year. It's still playful, still light, but now it's deeper, stronger, more whole, like it finally knows who it is. And I'll be real with you, I still do my usual ritual. Dub dub drops, I throw on the Swift UI session like it's a short film, pause. Rewind, scribble a note, rewatch. But this year? Mmm, yeah. I caught myself saying whoa out loud, just me, the glow of the screen and that spark of wonder hitting, like a soft beat drop in the middle of a deep night. The system felt alive, like it was dreaming, and we were just lucky enough to peek in. So why does it matter? Especially now when tools like Cursor or Claude can write half your UI code for you, because even if AI types it, you still need the sense of the system, the story behind it. Knowing what's new under the hood helps you prompt smarter, debug faster, and craft apps that feel native, not just functional. Cursor can auto-complete your dot view, but it won't tell you that. Yeah, your search role unlocks a whole new navigation pattern, or that scroll edge effects got redesigned on iPad. That's why this stuff matters. It helps you make choices, build with intention, even when you're moving fast. If you're new here, hey, I'm Daniel. I'm a solo indie dev. I build iOS apps with Swift UI and way too much curiosity. This is Solo Swift Crafter, a channel for people who design and code, who love clean UIs and who maybe just want to build something that feels good to use. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time. I drop deep dives like this regularly, and I try to keep it honest, human, and actually useful. And if you want to support the channel or just hang out, feel free to message me on Instagram at Solo Swift Crafter or check out my Patreon, links below. So, okay. In this video, I'm going to rapid fire my favorite Swift UI updates from DubDub25, just the stuff I actually care about as a solo dev. Clean UI, less code, better performance. All right, let's go. Toolbars now use liquid glass too. They can blur, tint, float, and morph during navigation. And mm, yeah. This year, we finally get a toolbar spacer. If you've ever faked spacing with dot frame or invisible text views, you know how huge this is. You can now drop in toolbar spacer where you need it. I replaced like three messy workarounds in under 20 minutes. Legit felt like uh, pressure washing a pile of tech debt. Super satisfying. Search got a big update. On iPhone, it's bottom aligned. On iPad, it floats top right. And in tab bars, it's now its own role. A real search tab that morphs into the search field. No extra code. Just give your tab a dot search role and let the system handle the magic. Before this, we had like four different versions of search UIs floating around. A mix of top bars, modal sheets, and sometimes just plain old hacks. This new system level search, it replaces all of them. One role native everywhere. And yeah, that feels kind of amazing. Toggles, pickers, sliders, they all feel fresh, smoother, more responsive. But what I really love, your custom views can join the party. There's a modifier to apply the system's glass effect to any shape. I tried it on a photo grid in one of my old apps, and suddenly it looked expensive. Resizable windows are here for real. The system hides and shows columns in split views based on space. You don't have to write logic. Uh, it just works. And the menu bar, so okay, it's now part of iPad, like Mac OS. Use the commands API you already know, and your iPad app gets a native menu bar when someone swipes down. It's one of those things where your app feels more pro without doing pro-level lifting. Lists are up to 16 times faster on Mac OS, even huge lists. And scrolling feels snappier across platforms thanks to smarter frame scheduling. You can even profile Swift UI performance directly in instruments now. There's a new lane for body updates, layout cost, and more. If you've ever felt like Swift UI was a black box, this opens the lid. 
it also shows you uh, when you're doing too much in your body or causing unnecessary redraws. And that's gold when you're optimizing solo. Swift UI works beautifully with structured concurrency now. And with the new at animatable macro, you can animate custom shapes without handwriting a crazy animatable data struct. Before this, animating a custom waveform view in my timer app took 40 lines. Now it's like uh, five, and my code reads like Swift again. This one's wild. Swift UI now supports spatial layout. You get 3D alignment, spatial overlays, and even volumetric interaction, like, like dragging a 3D water bottle around in space. If you're building for Vision OS, this is a whole new creative playground. But even as an iOS dev, just knowing Swift UI thinks in 3D now opens up ideas. It's depth aware. That's a mindset shift. We finally have a native Swift UI web view backed by WebKit. No more UI view representable wrappers. No more awkward bridging. Just drop in a URL or use the new web page model to control navigation and access page content. It's fast, it's clean and it's 100% Swift native. Widgets are coming to CarPlay and Vision OS. Drag and drop got smarter with Drag Container. You can batch drags, customize previews, and even support delete gestures, like dragging to the trash. Reality Kit is way more Swift UI friendly now. Entities conform to observable, popovers work in 3D space and animations sync better. If you're building mixed reality, this matters. Text editor now supports attributed string. That means rich text editing, built in, bold italics, links, fonts, all native, all Swift UI. It's the kind of thing that used to require third party libraries. Now it's just there. This one might be quietly revolutionary. You can now embed Swift UI scenes inside UI Kit or App Kit lifecycle apps, not just views, scenes like Menu Bar Extra, Immersive Space, or even Remote Immersive Space for Apple Vision Pro. It means older apps can start adopting Swift UI gradually, and newer apps can use system features that used to be locked away. It's the bridge we've been waiting for. So, okay, this year, Swift UI feels more like a system than ever. It's not just a framework, it's the, it's the design language, the platform glue, the performance layer, and the future of how Apple wants us to build. And mm, yeah, as a solo dev, that's huge. Because when you're building alone, every hour counts, every abstraction that saves you time, that gives you clarity, or lets your design flow into your code without friction. That's a win. The new toolbar spacer, um, the built-in rich text editing, even things like 3D spatial layout, they might seem small on paper, but they unlock flow. And when you're working solo, flow is everything. That zone where the code disappears and the idea just builds itself. Swift UI is getting closer to that. It's getting out of your way. And at the same time, giving you more ways to express what you mean. So yeah. I'm pretty excited. Might even celebrate by deleting some uh, background material ultra thin hacks and giving my fingers a break. If you're into this, building solo, obsessing over Swift UI details and chasing that quiet joy when a layout just clicks, then hey, welcome. This is Solo Swift Crafter. I'm Daniel. And yeah, I'm just one guy who really loves making apps that feel native, personal and smooth. Apps that feel like they belong and we're just getting started. Peace.